Hey y'all, it's been a year since I started a nano salt water tank so I wanted to show you some updates in this video and also mention some of the mistakes that I made in the past year. So if you're a beginner like me or about to start keeping corals, I hope you find this video useful. And if you're an experienced reefer, please share some tips and tricks so I can be better at this hobby. If you haven't watched the videos of my salt water tank, please check them out. It's been definitely a challenging journey when it comes to keeping corals, but the setup and the fish are all doing pretty good. Let's go over the tank setup. So I used a 22.4 gallon Fiji cube tank, and it's an AIO all-in-one tank so the filter is built inside. And the water pump that came with the tank was really loud so I've been using MaxiJet 600. And the lights are HyperGrow aquarium lights from Amazon. And the wave maker is a Higer Mini wave maker. And they're all holding up pretty well. In the filter chamber, I use a DIY sponge filter and the design prevents the salt creep. Wanted to use a sponge filter so in case I need a quarantine fish or coral, I can move this cycle to filter media to other tanks. And luckily I haven't had to do that. I also use a Mame skimmer from Japan. It's definitely an amazing product and works very well. And I thought the price is on the higher side, but you will definitely get what you pay for. The original wooden air stone has not been clogged and working continuously without having problems. Maybe I got lucky based on others' comments on wooden air stone on various websites, but mine's been working great. And maybe because it's original Mame design wooden air stone made in Japan. The floating rock work is made with dry mark rock, which is hanging on the back side of the tank with PVC board. The inside of the rock work is hollow so fish can hide, and they look pretty cozy in there but it was sort of a problem because they're hiding all day and I can't really see them besides during the feeding time. I get many compliments on this build so if you're interested please check it out. I made a lid out of a PVC board, and it's been holding up pretty well. I really like the color matches with the tank with black color. The cost of the build was very low so if you're interested I strongly recommend using a PVC board. This tank started with only 2 clownfish but I got some new members to this floaty island after 10 months. So the clowns are really aggressive and aggressive towards me too so I wanted to get a fish that are aggressive enough to fight back. I got a 6 line wrasse, surprisingly I haven't seen them fight and always swimming together. Then I got my dream fish the tail spot bunny, and I been wanting to keep this fish for the longest time so I was so happy when I got him. He looks so much like Goku from the super old cartoon Monkey King and the color changes all the time. He also gets along with others and I always see all of them swimming together and I love when he just sits on a rock and waits for the food. And I want to thank one of the Instagram followers who lives in Japan. He gave me some recommendations on the tank mate options and it's working very well so I really like them. Thank you so much. So I want to talk about the corals I bought around July last year. Unfortunately I made some mistakes which killed most of them so if you're a beginner or about to start coral I hope you'll find these information useful. So what you're seeing are the corals around August last year. They all were in great condition and I was so excited them to start taking over the floaty island. But I made a four big mistakes so the first one is Asterina starfish. So the local shop told me they are great to eat algae when my tank was newly established so they gave me a few for free. But they are super cute so I really liked them but I didn't know they occasionally munch on zoas so I got rid of them. And I didn't notice them eating corals but they breed really fast and took me about a month to get rid of them. The second mistake was using a praziquanto, so I used the prazipro on clowns because they are pooping stringy poops. And I didn't check so I didn't know but it's known to be reef safe but there is some information about praziquanto occasionally hurt corals. So if you are having issues with zinnia being the pest you can probably try prazipro and it will slow their growth. The third mistake was the biggest mistake I made back in the last fall. So I was dosing calcium chloride powder like I used to mix with RODI water for discus. I accidentally overdosed and it melted so many corals and doing water change didn't really help so I dipped them in a reef dip to get rid of the rotten tissues but I thought they were not gonna make it but luckily Kenya tree, GSB, firework, polyp and zoas survived. 
So the last mistake and a kind of a success but a still a mistake was using hydrogen peroxide to get rid of green hair algae growing next to corals. And the H2O2 is a great tool but some can't tolerate like other corals. So I tried it and it worked great on Zoa because the Zoa wasn't opening fully for a few months, but it opened up and puffed up soon after the H2O2 dip. And however, the others like Xenia and Firework Polyp died from H2O2 dip even though it was the same ratio and the same duration as I did for Zoa, and maybe I should try it a little shorter next time. So here remain three things that I learned from my mistake in the past year that I should watch out this year. So the first one is obviously the mistake that I just mentioned using medicines and chemicals. Now I check everything on forums and various websites before I use whether they are really safe, and I plan to purchase more corals in the near future so I hope this will prevent them from dying again. So the second one is the water being too clean, and I didn't know but water cannot be too clean for some of the corals growth, so I need to regularly test the water parameters and make sure corals are happy. The third one is to keep it simple, so I checked with many websites on how to care for the soft corals that I have, and almost everybody says regular water change helps with the coral and doesn't need any special supplements or feedings, and everybody says it needs to be consistent water parameters, good lighting, and a good flow. And I guess I was trying to overcomplicate things when I was spending so many time and some money figuring out how to speed their growth. So that's all my reflection of the past year, and I hope all the mistakes I made and the things that I learned from the past year will help you if you're planning to get a first coral. And if you're an experienced reefer, please share some tips and tricks so I can be better at this hobby each day. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you found this video somewhat useful. I plan to post more videos of other tanks in the future. See you all soon!